So, what have I been up to since the end of 2017? That's when Ocean was born and when I started to learn how to dropship. Then a lot of things happened with dropshipping. I had to start and stop multiple stores. eBay was a bit of a kick in the teeth for a while. They banned a bunch of stores. Mine got flagged. So I ended up losing like three, four stores or something like that. Uh, I ended up getting a permanent, irrevocable, lifetime ban from PayPal and I still have no idea what it is that I did because they still haven't told me yet. I have to contact their legal division and they hand write them a letter and contact their legal division somewhere in the states to be able to uh, figure that shit out. I just haven't bothered yet. Every time that I call, they're like, oh yeah, you're not allowed to use our services again. He's like, yeah, I know. That's not why I'm calling. This is for something else. So tons of ups and downs with that damn dropshipping store. And it's currently, currently on another down. I don't know what the hell's going on with it. I I get it going and I, I figure it out a little bit and it, it's, it's going, it's going, it's going. And then it's just like, <laughs> no, just straight diarrhea. And I don't understand it. Every time I'm like, I think I got it, I think I got it, I think I got it. Oh, my fucking tracks are tracks blown out, wash away, and I just go crashing into a Wile E. Coyote mountain, and it just doesn't work. I'm still uh, still going at it. It's It does make money. It covers enough, it, cover, it makes enough to cover the bills and pay the VA and a bunch of other stuff. So I've kept it going in hopes that it's going to do something one day, but I may or may not shut it down sometime soon because not only is it getting kind of shit sales, but the program that I'm having to use to operate it, called SkewGrid, is a piece of shit. And it keeps, keeps losing the connection between eBay and its, its own stuff. So it's the only one that I can use because it doesn't use an API to do the data transfer of in stock, out of stock, price change. So it really sucks that it's the only one available that does that and that eBay is kind of watching out for people using um, APIs because it's hard on their system. But recently eBay just unblocked a bunch of accounts that were flagged for drop shipping. So I don't know what is it. I don't know what's going on there. It's, it's really weird. The most amount of money I've made off a sale was like a few hundred dollars and then the shipping company fucked up the order and the dude was finally like you know what i don't care just send it back i don't care about it anymore so i lost like a couple a couple hundred dollars in profit it was a like a two-person pedal boat no it was a five-person pedal boat two people could paddle or some shit i don't know. so that really sucked i've had a, a few other things that have happened like that where i'm like yes i sold an amazing item and i made some really good profit only to have it come back or some shit happened, and it's like, well, there goes that profit. That would've, that would've been a, few, a nice 50 bucks in my pocket, but oh well. Then I tried to make it a company in the United States, and it's, I just couldn't figure it out. It would've been awesome to be able to get tax exemption on on some items in some, on some states, because I would've made even more money, which would've been sweet, but as a foreigner trying to get that, it is so difficult to figure out the IRS is bullshit. I've spent months and hours, countless hours trying to figure it out. Like talking to bankers and, and um, like financial attorneys and uh, CPAs and all sorts of shit like that. And just like, no one knows how to do it. And I'm like, how does everyone else do this? They like, it has, obviously people do. Why doesn't anyone know how to do this? Uh, it was such, a hassle and I wasn't making enough money at the store yet that I just haven't bothered to try again. So I also hired a person to help me out. I hired her about a year ago, not, maybe not quite a year ago, to help out with the store, do a lot of listing, a lot of just the monotonous work that takes forever because there's like 500 to 800 items on my store so it takes forever to do anything because sometimes shit has to be done singular one by one and that's that's it and I'm like Oh, the mind-numbing job of this. I'm so happy I can pay someone $2.20 an hour in the Philippines to do this for me. 
thank God. And she's quite happy for the work. Apparently, being able to make even $2 an hour and work from home in the Philippines is a fantastic job. So I pay her a little bit over that and she gets to work from home too. So that's also part of the reason why I'm just keeping the store going is because I'm actually giving a person a job. I may not be making money at it, but I'm learning a bunch of shit. So it's, it's, it's kind of win-win. She gets work and I get experience, even though I would love some extra cash. So it's going all right. Apparently August is an odd month for e -com anyway. I don't quite understand why a lot of sales slow down, but they do. And then the past eight months, I've been really, really diving a lot deeper into how to make a media company, how to do Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Instagram ads, how to track, how to read analytics, how to do all sorts of fun, amazing stuff that is incredibly profitable if you can figure it out. I bought a course and it was an amazing course and I'm still going through it. There's so much to it, oh my God, but it's gold. Then I also met another guy that is specifically doing restaurants and restaurants seem like a very easy win. He had an entirely incredible, amazing system set up that you can track the ROI, like it's really, really dope. So I invested in that as well. I have a, a restaurant client right now that I'm implementing everything for, made a bit of money there. And I had a, another dude and he did custom seats for Harleys and Yamahas, you know, street bikes and other stuff like that. He would peel, peel it back, either reskin it, put a new skin on, whatever, but he would carve it out to the shape of your ass and then put foam in and then put a heat pad in and there's some other trickery to it. And he made the seat like a thousand times better for riders. But for some dumb reason, he was not as go hard as he was blow hard. So he kind of fired me after two months because he, I got him a bunch of leads. He didn't bother following up on any of the leads. As far as I know, like he was, people were like, oh my God, this is a thing that exists. My lower back hurts so much. Take my money. Here's my seat. Do it now. And he, I, I don't know whatever happened with any of it. One dude had three Harleys and he wanted every seat done. That was like three and a half, four thousand dollars of work right there. That would have taken him like a week and a half if he hurried at it, if not less. So for some stupid reason, he didn't bother like hustling like he said he was going to. I got him a bunch of leads. He never followed up. He fired me because I wasn't doing enough. Ultimately, what was the straw on the camel's back was he wanted me to go to another town to do live streaming for him while he works on some seat at a dealership and because I couldn't see the value in that and I wanted to get paid what he already owed me even though I was doing a bunch of stuff for free even though I was doing the live streaming for free and I was teaching him all sorts of fun stuff to do with social he's like nope you can't see my vision you're not worth it fuck you and done and I'm like what the fuck, dude? Why? You could have made so much money and so could have I. But he couldn't see my genius and he completely missed out. So at the same time as all of that going on, basically been doing some couch hopping or well, house hopping, whatever. I've been kind of standing at my dad's place. Baby and wife have been staying at friends' places because we just can't find any places and then when we did it turned out to be at least one place that we're like fuck no about and then the one place that we just had to move out of our our landlord was a slum lord and i i'm taking them to arbitration guys i'm doing it i have to re-go through all the evidence and make sure it's labeled and give proper context and do more voiceovers and all sorts of fun shit like that to be able to get it ready where it's accepted for arbitration to like so that the judge doesn't have to like spend hours sifting through shit to understand what the hell happened it's like okay it's probably labeled okay got it. understood so that's what i'm working on and it takes a while because i have so much other shit to do so yeah no places to really rent that's actually reasonable uh, like everything is 2000 plus basically and plus utilities a month to have like 
two bedrooms, one bathroom, have two adults, a baby, and a dog sort of situation. For some reason, puppies, puppies right there, are expensive to have in a house. Like, oh, you have an animal? Yes, that's an extra three, four hundred, five hundred dollars a month, please. And you're like, holy shit. Having an animal is expensive. Not only do you have to feed them and vet them and do all other whatever with them, like just ha housing them is hundreds a month. Yeah, you, you are hundreds of month. You are hundreds, yes you are. Funny dog is funny. The ultimate goal is to get a couple more clients and I got a strategy for that. I just got to put more of it into place because I've been trying to figure out a bunch of other stuff so I feel more confident to be able to go in there and be like, hey guys, this is what I do. And um, I can, you know, deliver some results to you. I've also got, I'm also going to just start doing podcasting and interviewing with local businesses around here at restaurants and then get restaurants interested that way. And not only does this system work for restaurants, it also works for a lot of other different types of businesses. So you never know what might actually just come out of a, a little conversation at a restaurant for a couple bucks. Just like here, I'll pay for your meal. Let's talk for 30 minutes. Interest, find something interesting about yourself, what you do, how you help people. Have a meal, talk about the food, and then interview is done. That sort of thing. I think that'd be kind of nice, kind of fun, kind of cool. So, short term goal, get like another two, three, four clients. Then get a place. Then move back in with the wife and the baby and be all like, yay, we're a family again. We don't have to live in separate houses anymore. So that's the goal. Let's make it happen.